Welcome to Hibiscus Petroleum's Financial Results Webcast. This webcast presents an overview of the results reported as part of our quarterly financial report for the three-month period ended 30th September 2020 and released earlier today. This webcast has been prepared by Hibiscus Petroleum Berhad or the company solely for general information purposes and should at all times be heard and or viewed together with the full quarterly report for the same period that has been made available or published by the company on its website. This webcast may contain forward-looking statements, which are based on current expectations, beliefs, and projections about future events or matters. By listening to and or viewing the webcast, you agree to the limitations and notifications set out in the disclaimer section of this webcast. Our presentation today comprises six components. In part one, Lily Ling, our Senior General Manager, Corporate Development, will discuss the overall all-market outlook. She will also provide an update on our fundraising exercise via Islamic Convertible Renewable Preference Shares, or CRPS, as well as the company's decarbonisation strategy. In part two, Dr. Pascal Hoss, the CEO of CR Biscus Syndrome Berhad, will provide an overview of performance at North Sabah, our Malaysian producing asset. Golok Ravi, Manager, Economics and Business Planning, will provide an overview of and an update on developments at the Anasura Cluster, our UK producing asset, in part three. In part 4, Mark Payton, the CEO of Anasuria Hibiscus UK Limited, will then provide an overview of the status of the development project relating to the marigold and sunflower discovered oil fields located offshore in the UK continental shelf. In part 5, Yip Chi Yong, or CY, our Chief Financial Officer, will present the highlights of the group's financial results for the first financial quarter ended 30th September 2020. Joyce Vasudevan, our Head of Corporate Finance, will then conclude our presentation with some of our key messages for this quarter in part 6. Should you have any queries, you may contact our Investor Relations team by the email address provided at the end of this presentation. I shall now hand over to Lily. Hello, this is Lily Ling. I am the Senior General Manager of Corporate Development at Hibiscus Petroleum Berhad. Let me commence this presentation by providing you with a brief outlook on the oil market. Referring to this chart by Rystart Energy, it shows that the extension of current OPEC Plus cards into 2021 is vital to ensuring a balanced oil market and consequently a stable oil price. OPEC Plus had planned to taper previous production cuts from January 2021 onwards, which would have resulted in the market being oversupplied. However, on 17 November 2020, OPEC's Joint Ministerial Monitoring Committee met and reaffirmed their commitment to the full compliance of production cuts. Their recommendations will be provided to OPEC and the OPEC Plus grouping that are expected to meet on 30th November and 1st December respectively, with Rystart expecting decisions on future cuts to be announced then. This chart, also by Rystart Energy, shows the historical brand price together with the futures curve and their brand-based case projection to 2025. Based on their analysis, a recovery in all prices is expected from early 2021 onwards, picking around 60 US dollars per barrel in 2022. In the shorter term, oil prices have been lifted by positive news regarding the efficacy of various COVID-19 vaccines currently in trials. The Rystart model also currently projects that by the end of 2021, brand oil prices are expected to exit 50 US dollars a barrel. On 9 September 2020, we announced the raising of up to 2 billion ringgit through the private placement of Islamic Convertible Redeemable Preference Shares, or CRPS. This was approved by our shareholders on 3rd November 2020 and forms part of our plans to acquire producing assets in Southeast Asia. We are seeking to be in a position to secure quality assets at relatively low valuations as the oil and gas industry is currently hit by the impact of the pandemic and climate change activism. We expect to capitalize on the eventual recovery in oil prices, which, based on analysis by Rystar Energy, is expected from 2021 onwards. Despite the various challenges faced since then, we are pleased to have raised over 200 million ringgit to date. The CRPS is being issued in tranches, and issuances will be time and size to minimize dilutive effects to existing shareholders. We are now witnessing a transition towards greener sources of energy, including a push towards the reduction of carbon emissions across all sectors. 
Decarbonizing is essential for us to reach compliance to the net zero goal of 2050 as committed by the Government of the UK and Petronas. Additionally, adopting decarbonisation strategies will help our business to remain relevant, investable and sustainable. As part of that transition, our North Sabah operations have already installed solar photovoltaic and wind turbine systems to power a few of our remote platform jackets. Other decarbonizing strategies under consideration include the reduction of upstream flaring, venting, and fugitive emissions, as well as investments in renewable energy assets and participation in nature-based solutions. I'll now hand you over to Pascal to provide a business overview of our Malaysian North Sabah operations. Hello, I am Pascal Hoss. I'm the CEO of Sea Hibiscus and Deer in Brahat. Sea Hibiscus is the holder of a 50% participating interest in the 2011 North Sabah Enhanced Oil Recovery Production Sharing Contract, or PSC. We're also operator of this PSC. The remaining 50% participating interest is held by Petronas Charigali Sandir in Bahat. The table on this slide shows the operational performance of the North Sabah asset over the past four quarters. That is from the 1st of October 2019 until the 30th of September 2020. During the current quarter, the North Sabah production facilities recorded an average uptime of 86% and an average OPEX per barrel of 17.08 US dollars per barrel. Average gross oil production for the current quarter stood at approximately 16,900 barrels. These metrics were affected by the commencement of plant maintenance activities, as well as the platform jacket shutdown due to the drilling of the four wells of the St. Joseph Minor and Major Sands Redevelopment Project. We expect these figures to improve in the next quarter following the completion of maintenance and drilling activities. Furthermore, during the current quarter, we conducted two crude oil offtakes with a total of approximately 592,000 barrels of crude oil, net to sea hibiscus, being sold at an average realized price of 39.46 US dollars per barrel. Overall, despite the lower oil prices, we are pleased with our operating performance for this quarter. As previously disclosed, in order to mitigate risks of business continuity caused by low oil price environment, during this period of uncertainty, we had entered into a contract in April 2020 to sell 750,000 barrels of crude oil at an average price of 35 US dollars per barrel to be delivered during the remaining period of calendar year 2020. Of this amount, 250,000 barrels were sold in the current quarter, with the remaining 500,000 barrels to be sold in the next quarter. Referring to the project shown on this slide, the SF30 Water Flood Phase 1 Project Development Plan was approved by Petronas in October 2019, with water injection having commenced in June 2020. Phase 1 of this project was intended to assess the long-term viability of a full field water injection development project. Total capital expenditure for Phase 1 was approximately 54 million ringgit and is being shared equally with our joint venture partner. We also successfully completed our 2020 drilling program. On 26 June 2020, Petronas approved the plan for St. Joseph Minor and Major Sands redevelopment. This drilling campaign comprised four infill wells at the St. Joseph field, with three wells targeting the Minor Sands and one targeting the Major Sands. The first well sputtered on 7 July 2020, with all four successfully drilled and completed in the current quarter. The project completed with the drilling rig demobilizing from the platform on 23rd September 2020. Despite the prevailing low oil prices at the time, the project was economically viable. This program was completed with a total capital expenditure of approximately 212 million ringgit, which has been shared equally with Petronas Charigali. Based on stabilized well tests, the new St. Joseph Info wells added an incremental 2,200 barrels per day of production. As a result of this incremental production, the North Saba asset successfully recorded daily cumulative production exceeding 20,000 barrels per day for several days in September 2020. This peak production level for the North Saba asset was last attained in 2014 under the previous operator. These results are consistent with our objective of enhancing production from the North Saba asset and demonstrates that Malaysia is an integral part of our long-term growth strategy. In July 2020, we received the Focus Recognition Award from Petronas in relation to our 2020 drilling campaign. This was for the successful delivery of the St. Joseph Minor and Major Sands Field Development Plan, or FDP. 
Petronas acknowledged that we demonstrated strong commitment and a determined effort to review the St. Joseph OPEX and pledge to reduce costs. They further recognized that our actions have led to the timely delivery of cost-effective reserves monetization. In August 2020, at the inaugural Malaysia Upstream Awards 2020, we were honored to win three awards for our operating performance in calendar year 2019. These were Best Emerging Petroleum Arrangement Contractor, Gold Award in the Wells Excellence category, and Bronze Award in the Drilling Excellence category. We are very proud of these awards, as it is evidence of the hard work put in by everyone in the company, together with our JV partner, Petronas Charigali. We continue to work towards aggressive production targets and the relentless pursuit of cost optimization opportunities without compromising the high health and safety standards that are expected in our industry. Kalaka will now take you through the details of the Anasaria cluster, which is located offshore the United Kingdom in part three of this webcast. Hello, I'm Goloka Ravi. I'm a manager in economics and business planning. I'll now take you through some updates on the Anasuria cluster. In Anasuria, the average uptime achieved for the current quarter was 94%, while the average daily production rate was 3,084 barrels of oil equivalent per day. Both metrics exceeded that of the previous quarter. One offtake was conducted in the current quarter with 250,337 barrels of crude oil net to Anasuria Hibiscus UK lifted and sold at an average realized oil price of 41.99 US dollars per barrel. We achieved an average OPEX per barrel of oil equivalent in Anasuria for the current quarter of 17.53 US dollars. In September 2020, a scale squeeze operation was conducted on the Guillemot P3 well which contributed to an increase in the OPEX per BOE. Consistent with the previous quarter, a combination of a reduction in costs due to the lower oil price environment, deferral of activities to mitigate COVID-19 risks, as well as the optimization in timing of one-off activities in calendar year 2020, has contributed towards a low OPEX per BOE. The performance of the wells is also being actively monitored and efforts are being continuously expended to optimize production. We are currently on track to achieve our target of reducing the OPEX per BOE to 18.5 US dollars over calendar year 2020. Planning also continues for a 40-day offshore turnaround of the Anasuria FPSO. This is expected to be executed in the second half of the 2021 financial year. This turnaround will be to improve the reliability and integrity of the Anasuria FPSO as well as to ensure a safe working environment. Several minor production enhancement projects are also included in the planned scope of this turnaround. Barring unforeseen circumstances, these measures, together with the production enhancement projects described on the next slide, are expected to improve the operational performance of the Anasuria asset. Referring to the projects itemized in the table on this slide, no major capex is planned for calendar year 2020. For the subsidy bottlenecking project and future infill wells, the subsurface studies and technical assessments are currently ongoing, and further disclosures will be made as these projects progress. I will now hand over to Mark, who will give you an update on the marigold and sunflower assets. Hello, I'm Mark Payton. I am the CEO of Anasuri Hibiscus UK Limited. I will now briefly take you through the key points of our interests in blocks 1513A and 1513B. These are development assets which are located in the United Kingdom. This slide shows the target timeline of the marigold and sunflower fields as we achieve key milestones towards our first oil objective from these assets. We purchased interests in the blocks in which these fields are located and based upon reports from third-party competent experts, they contain 24.9 million barrels of 2C contingent resources net to the group. A schematic of the development concept is shown here. The development concept is currently being optimized and once finalized, our next key milestone will be securing of OGA approval for the Field Development Plan or FDP. After the OGA approves the FDP, we will pursue the realization of the final investment decision or FID for this project. Post FID, we may farm out some of our interest in the marigold and sunflower assets 
as we execute the project towards the achievement of first oil. Given the current COVID-19 situation, it is likely that Project FID will now be sought in 2021, with first oil targeted for 2023. We are extremely excited by the potential value to be derived from Marigold and Sunflower Fields. We see this asset as a game changer for the group, introducing a step change to our daily net oil production rate. It will also establish the group as a mid-size EMP player. I will now pass you on to CY, who will take you through the financials of the group for the current quarter. Hi, I'm CY, the group's Chief Financial Officer. I will now take you through the financial highlights for the current quarter. During the current quarter, the group sold 843,000 barrels of crude oil, out of which 593,000 were net to see hibiscus in North Sabah and 250,000 barrels were from the Anasuria cluster. From the 593,000 barrels of crude oil sold in the current quarter, the North Sabah asset generated revenue of 98 million ringgit, compared to 36.7 million ringgit in the previous quarter from the sale of 249,000 barrels. Average realized oil price achieved was 39.46 US dollars per barrel, higher than the 31.79 US dollars per barrel in the previous quarter. As a result, revenue generated in the current quarter was more than double that recognized in the previous quarter an increase of 61.3 million ringgit. Gross profit margin over revenue improved from 43.6% in the previous quarter to 48% in the current quarter. The gross profit margin remained reasonably high despite the relatively low average realized oil price due to the careful management of costs. Average uptime in the North Sabah production facilities in the current quarter was 86% compared to 94% in the previous quarter. The lower average uptime in the current quarter was due to the shutdown for planned maintenance activities performed at the offshore platforms at St. Joseph, South Furious and Barton and infill drilling activities. Consequently, average net oil production decreased by approximately 10% from 6,949 barrels per day in the previous quarter to 6,251 barrels per day in the current quarter. These events have resulted in average OPEX per barrel increasing from 10.27 US dollars in the previous quarter to 17.08 US dollars in the current quarter. The North Sabah asset also reported earnings before interest, taxes, depreciation and amortization or EBITDA of approximately 46 million ringgit, with a margin over revenue of just over 47%. The tax regime under which Malaysian oil and gas activities are governed and is thus applicable to sea hibiscus is the Petroleum Income Tax Act 1967 or PETA. The provisions of PETA are applied to net taxable petroleum income at the rate of 38%. Net tax expenses incurred in the current quarter were due to taxes levied on profits generated from operations. Turning to the Anasuria hibiscus segment in the United Kingdom, EBITDA for the current quarter was approximately 21 million ringgit as compared to a loss before interest taxes depreciation and amortization of approximately 6 million ringgit in the previous quarter. Revenue recorded in the current quarter amounted to 46.6 million ringgit, compared to 1.8 million ringgit in the previous quarter. To recap, revenue in the previous quarter was derived solely from the sale of gas, as the crude oil offtake originally planned for the previous quarter was deferred to the current quarter. In the current quarter, 250,000 barrels of crude oil net to Anasuria Hibiscus UK was sold at an average realized oil price of 41.99 US dollars per barrel. Average OPEX per BOE in the current quarter was 17.53 US dollars as compared to 14.29 US dollars in the previous quarter. This cost increase was due to a scale squeeze operation being conducted on the Gilmore P3 well in September 2020. Consistent with the previous quarter, a combination of an optimization in costs due to the low price environment, deferral of activities to mitigate COVID-19 risk, as well as the optimization in timing of one-off maintenance activities in calendar year 2020, have all contributed towards the achievement of a low OPEX per BOE metric. In the United Kingdom, the total tax rate for Anasuria hibiscus is 40%, which consists of a ring fence, corporation tax and a supplementary charge at 30% and 10%, respectively. Anasuria Hibiscus UK recorded a loss before taxation for the current quarter and was not in a taxable position. As a result, 
the segment recorded a net tax credit in the current quarter amounting to 576,000 ringgit. Our business performance is underpinned by several factors, predominantly the price of the brand crude oil benchmark at approximately the time of a scheduled offtake from our crude oil storage facilities. Given that the oil price is affected by global macroeconomic factors, which are not within the control of the company, focus is placed on the operational performance of the assets, such as production rates and facilities availability, as well as the management of operational expenses. A key metric that we utilize to track our operational performance is average unit production cost. The average unit production cost for both the Anasura cluster and the North Sabah PSC are well below the average realized oil price achieved in the respective quarters. The careful management of costs to maintain low operational expenditure and the delivery of production enhancement projects are key towards obtaining a low unit production cost structure. This is a significant contributor towards our profitability. We wish to reiterate that whilst profits are extremely important, management's focus remains on delivering strong and sustainable EBITDA levels as long-term business continuity is of the highest priority. Year-on-year, year, both total assets and shareholders' funds have remained fairly consistent. The provisions for impairment for oil and gas assets recognised in June 2020 have been largely offset by net earnings generated from both the Anasuria and North Sabah assets. We have built our total assets to approximately 2.5 billion ringgit, and shareholders' funds stand at about 1.2 billion ringgit. Included in shareholders' funds are retained earnings of 368.1 million ringgit. Net assets per share currently stands at 75 cents. As at 30th September 2020, the group's unrestricted cash balance stood at 96.3 million ringgit. The restricted cash recorded in our results relates mainly to a security for our portion of the estimated cost of decommissioning the facilities of the Anasuria cluster. In this regard, we are required to periodically place monies into a trust, and this commenced 18 months after the completion date of the Anasuria cluster acquisition. This activity will continue until such time that the security has been fully provided. In January 2020, the group drew down a short-term term loan for working capital requirements. The amount was fully repaid in July 2020 as per the agreed schedule. In April 2020, the group signed a deed of supply and collaboration with Trafigura, which covers several areas of commercial cooperation. The agreements with Trafigura form part of an overall plan to ensure that all planned projects across the group are fully funded over the 2020 and 2021 calendar years. In November 2020, we announced the successful raising of 203.6 million ringgit to date through the placement of Islamic CRPS. These funds will be used for the potential acquisitions of producing assets in Southeast Asia. Separately, we will continue to engage with financial institutions and industry players to explore funding options and capital raising initiatives which run in tandem with our growth plans. Before we wrap up, I would like to hand over to Joyce to highlight a few takeaway points. Hello, I am Joyce Vasudevan, Head of Corporate Finance. I would like to close this presentation with some key messages. As part of our business continuity plan, Hibiscus Petroleum has activated various measures to mitigate the spread and impact of COVID-19 within our organization as the health and safety of our personnel remains of utmost importance. Whilst crude oil prices may currently be low, our production remains on target. Our financial year 2021 target is to produce 3.4 million barrels of oil. In the current quarter, we sold approximately 843,000 barrels of oil from two off-takes in North Sabah and one from Anna Surya. At North Sabah, we have successfully completed the St. Joseph Minor and Major Sands redevelopment. A total of four wells were drilled, with a focus on optimizing both our operating and development expenditure. The new wells resulted in an incremental 2,200 barrels of oil in gross production leading to a peak gross oil production of 20,000 barrels of oil per day for several days in September 2020. This production level was last seen on the North Sabah asset in 2014. As an organisation, we are cognizant of the energy transition taking place worldwide. Decarbonising is essential for us to meet UK government's and Petronas's net zero goal in 2050. 
We have put in place measures such as the use of solar PV and wind turbine systems to power some of our remote platform jackets and are looking at other strategies to reduce our overall greenhouse gas emissions. As part of our strategy to acquire producing assets in areas close to where we are already present, and despite market challenges, to date, we have raised over 200 million ringgit through the issuance of Islamic CRPS. These funds will be utilised to acquire assets in Southeast Asia. In conclusion, we believe that the steps we are taking should meet our business continuity objectives in the near term, while our business development initiatives will provide us the opportunity to grow our asset base. And that's all we have for this quarterly earnings webcast. Thank you for tuning in.